what is up guys and welcome back to the channel guys we got something new um i'm sure the topic is not new but we finna be talking about some bread how the u.s ruined bread uh y'all know the one video i did before it kind of showed like the different grams of sugar that's in bread we basically eating cake sandwiches you know what i'm saying uh i i love the bread because that's all i know that's all i'm used to you know what i'm saying so i still eat it like, i'm gonna make me a sandwich later you know but we finna see how the u.s ruin this bread uh i know that's gonna i'm sure it's gonna be talking about all the sugar but another fun side note is that uh you know how people would complain about gas being high and all you know that took our attention all because now bread is higher than a gallon of gas and nobody's talking about it but that's just what i seen you know i paid like for some for something for some bread if the good quality bread at least so we finna check this out y'all hit that subscribe button send down those recommendations i love bread there is so much not good Oprah. bread in france and although man doth not live by bread alone without it the meal seems incomplete mm. On every corner, there is a bakery that is pumping out delicious, fresh, wow. well-made bread. It's so fresh. This is not easily available to me, and I want to know why. Why is it that the bread that I can get easily looks very, very different? Very different, yeah. Why is it that the U.S. sucks at making bread? In fact, let me just show you what that looks like. Not okay, the wonder, bro. Right? 12 hours earlier, uh, still back in the U.S. I'm, I'm actually at a grocery store right now. This is how a lot of us Americans get our bread. Mind you, it's a lot of bread out there. I don't know if it's real or fake, but we have quite the variety of bread. I'm not the type for the, uh, what is that, nature zone? I'm not the type for the wheat bread or nothing like that, but it's a lot. I even get like raisins and stuff in it. Side. My favorite part is when they make this plastic look like it's steamy. It's just like foggy plastic to be like, this was just baked right now. It's like, <laughs> no, this was actually baked like three weeks ago in a factory in like Connecticut. It's even made with real butter. <laughs> made with real butter? Oh my, did you see that little loaf was three ninety nine? What the heck? It's even look at made that. with real butter. <laughs> That's too expensive. You'll be glad Definitely don't like Wonder Bread. I'm purchasing this bread is because I want to bring it with me to, to France just to like have an example lesson, and I may use it as a pillow because it's literally as soft as a Nova Foam pillow. That Wonder Bread different. Uh, we get Mrs. Baird. I don't know if y'all heard of that. I like the Mrs. Baird bread. Some of this bagged bread is made with ingredients that are literally illegal in the EU. Wow. Back to France, let's do it. There's nothing more American than <laughs> bread. The way he carrying the bread with us, buddy. I'm going to France. Bonjour. In case you're wondering, yes, any video from Paris must include music like this. Nice, <laughs> gentle cafe accordion music. There's my composer Tom making it right now pretty cool it's just so good that's funny okay so yeah we know that france is good at bread and the u.s sucks at it is this just another video where i shit on the usa for being terrible at certain things yes it is <laughs> it's exactly what it is but hear me out i actually have something to say here i believe that bread is a really important symbol for a bigger cultural phenomenon Facts. in the u.s and that's what i want to talk about today where industrialized bread came from why it exists and how some people are trying to change it I'll get to that explanation, but first I'm going to go into that bakery over there and buy myself a large ball of butter and flour stuffed with chocolate. Oh, and Tom, <laughs> can you throw in a beat to this accordion music, please? Yeah. Thanks. Any questions? There you go. I like that. Are you going to what in the world is that? Croissant? Is that just a croissant? They actually look good, and I'm very hungry right now. Are you going to finish that croissant? <laughs> Pause. My job is to make videos for you. And the reason I'm able to do that is because there are brands that support this channel. No. This video in particular is sponsored by BetterHelp. And Better I'm grateful Health. for that because I deeply support what they're trying to do. BetterHelp is 
online virtual therapy. Oh, I've wow. been going to therapy for several years. It has changed my life, but I'm very aware that it's not easy to find a therapist the traditional way. With BetterHelp, technology helps fix some of this. You fill out a survey and then BetterHelp assesses your needs and it matches you with someone in their massive network of over 20,000 licensed therapists. Wow. And then you start communicating with them like in as little as 48 hours. You can do a video call, you can do just a phone call, or you could even just do a live text. If your therapist isn't a good fit, you can easily change for free. And it eventually helps you find the right fit. Therapy is a way to improve your mental health, something that we all need. This is why over 2 million people are on BetterHelp. This isn't a self-help thing. This isn't like a crisis line. It is legitimate real therapy done securely on the internet. If you want That's to try dope. this out at a discount, you can. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com slash Johnny Harris. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but out, it also Johnny. gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. Therapy has changed my life. It could change yours. Go check out BetterHelp. And thank you, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel and the journalism that I do. Let's dive back into the video. Okay, so why bread? There's a million other things I could talk about that are better in other parts of the world. But it turns out that bread is the most important prepared food that humans mm -hmm. have ever made. And therefore, it is worth talking about. Especially in the U.S. because bread, technically, when you go to a restaurant, they give you free bread all the time. You know? So, it's just crazy. When I want a sandwich, I got to pay five bucks for it. And it's a sweet sandwich. So, let me explain in under a minute the overview of the tens of thousands of years of history of bread and its chemistry and why it's so important. Don't think I can do it in under a minute? Check this out. 12,000 years ago, humans realized that they could plant this grass instead of just foraging for it. This grass was called wheat, and when it was ground up with a stone, it made this powder that, if you put water with it, creates this stretchy, goopy thing that has a bunch of sugar from the flour that's been released. Oh look, wow. all the bacteria <laughs> in the air love this sugary goop, nice. and they descend oh. to feast on it, burping out gas as they eat. Whoa, the gas can't float up into the air because it's getting trapped in this stretchy ball of goop, like a balloon, mm -hmm. like a pillow, like magic. Magic. All this feasting and burping is making it rise <laughs> and turn into a pillowy I thing. know this guy. I I actually what hold up. Magic. I know all this feasting and burping. I know we talk about I know we talking about burping, but I actually watched this guy this, uh this guy right here burping. I forgot his name, but he like drinks a lot of drinks. I don't know if it's healthy, but it's entertaining. I forgot his name, Big Lands Chugs or something like that. Entertaining stuff. I mean, I couldn't drink a big old boot of Mountain Dew, but it, it's cool. Making it rise and turn into a pillowy thing that is way bigger than it was. Put this blob next to some fire and all of the little bubbles that were just created turn hard. Wait, all of this can happen because of this one grass? Yes. Cool, let's plant a lot more of this grass and build all of human civilization off of it. Said humans. <laughs> So that is bread, like the oldest and most important prepared food item that humans have ever invented. Eventually humans got really good at doing this bread, flour, water, yeast thing. And especially here in France, they took it really seriously and have created a whole culture around making bread. At least they're, they're making different breads. Uh, I've seen that, I've seen on TikTok, this woman had her own bread maker. I thought that was pretty cool as well. They took it really seriously and have created a whole culture around making bread delicious and amazing. And you can see that they've continued that culture today just by the number of bakeries that exist mm. in this city. There are 30,000 independent bakeries wow. in France. Compare that to the 3,000 that are in wow. the United States. And then remember that the US has like a much larger population. And if you do all the math, you see that France has 50 times more bakeries per capita than the United States. Wow. 50 times. I mean, that is such a clear indication of how much w they value good bread that is baked a certain way. You're with Mr. Local over here. Yeah. <laughs> Local French food in France. Yes. 94% of Parisians live less than five minutes away from a bakery. Wow. And That's that a... shows you they care. They yeah. care. It's like- you Those sandwiches look, look good. Those sandwiches like, look uh -huh. good. That, uh, th this is their priority. Yeah, yeah. And the culture of, of eating is just as much important here as how like, the good. ingredients are sourced and prepared and whatnot. Yeah. People don't eat while rushing towards their next meeting or whatever. Like it's very much, no, you sit down, you make it a thing. It's just a part of the way of life here. Yeah. 
People come into the boulangeries almost on a daily basis. And they check That's in with a each lot other. Of it's like, uh, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm doing great. This is what's happening. Why, 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 why? That is the question. Why are these bread cultures so different? And the answer comes down to what America was founded on. I mean, a reminder that America is a country founded by a bunch of people who left their country to go make a new life, to do things mm -hmm. differently, to do things more individualistically. And the way that expressed itself for a really long time was mechanization, industrialization. And to be clear in the history, Britain was as much to blame for all of this mechanizing <laughs> of bread as America was. That's insulting! But anyway, we're talking about the USA for a little bit. So by the 1920s, you had this machine that was invented, an automatic bread slicer. What? Hello convenience, innovation, America. Of course. No more serrated knife versus a tough, crusty loaf. Now the machine will do it for you. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> I, that, that's where that came from. I thought it was, I never understood when people said this was the greatest thing since sliced bread, but that never makes sense. Never makes sense. I mean, that's perfect. I ain't gonna lie, that, that is perfect. I mean, who wouldn't want their bread already sliced up? Well, I like when I buy bread that it's already, it's already sliced up. You know, I, I like that. I never thought about that now that I think about it. Never thought about that, but it, it's very convenient. You. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Oh, so that's where we're at. <laughs> this is the greatest thing says America. And Europe was like, <laughs> wait, yeah, we like machines too, but like not for bread. Slice this bread and you make your bread spoil faster. We don't need a machine for sliced bread. But the automatic slicer was just the beginning for America. No, I'm just getting warmed up. <laughs> now that we have sliced bread that, yes, spoils faster, let's make it, I don't know, not spoil as fast. One way to do this is to take the part of the wheat berry that has oils in it, the husk and the bran, and get rid of it. Uh. Focus on the big carb loaded berry in the middle. But there had to be a more industrial solution to make the bread last longer, to be whiter, to be softer. And it's the 1950s and Europe is like, whoa, dude, America, chill out. Like bread is just bread. We've been doing this for All literally right. tens of thousands of years. Let's just like stick to the program. And America's like, no. <laughs> so America starts adding all of this stuff to their bread, bleaches and dough conditioners. And suddenly they're putting their bread into controlled chambers so that it they trying to kill us or something like why is all that need to be in bread is and dough conditioners and suddenly they're putting their bread into controlled chambers so that it will be hot enough to rise faster and they're putting preservatives in so that their bread can now sit on a shelf for not just one or two days like it should but four days five days six days a whole week and it's still soft it is still white it is still spongy and delicious but it now has 15 ingredients instead of three wow and it's cheap and convenient and stable and america is loving this and europe is like not ah, kanye you took this way too far this is not bread anymore and indeed i would argue that this is not bread anymore what is it's it? a bread like substance the different product made from a different process oh man i feel bad i want this is probably why every time I eat bread here, I get like the major hiccups. I promise like every time I eat some breaded food, whether it's pizza, a sandwich, I always get the hiccups like severe, like super bad for some. Oh, they didn't put something in there to give you, they trying to take your boy out, no. And yet we use the same word for it. If you want to know more about what's inside of this kind of bread, I was actually here making this video when I stumbled upon a video from one of my favorite YouTubers, Adam Ragusea, that's like a deep dive into all of the ingredients in this kind of industrial bread. Definitely. I gotta go check that Some out. Some bread in the US has taken it so far that they will put in additives that keep it spongy and soft or that keep it really white. Even though these additives are known to like cause cancer and inflame asthma and <laughs> do all of these terrible things. Many of these additives that are legal. That makes sense. That makes sense why I get the hiccups like crazy. To sense. be put in American bread are literally illegal in Europe and many other countries. As that is crazy. Carbonamide. What do they even mean? This is a whitening agent. But you know what? This product, ADA, also helps other things stay softer, like 
yoga mats. ADA is in yoga mats to make them spongy and soft. And it is banned in wow. the EU and many other countries. Our obsession. We eat in yoga sandwiches. Yoga mat sandwiches. With convenience. That's crazy. Cheapness, softness, shelf life has led us down a really dangerous path. And yet That's we're totally wild. okay with it somehow. This is why I think bread is a useful symbol for broader American culture. It shows us how far we are willing to go to prioritize things like cheapness oh, and convenience bread. over tried and true methods of, that have been baked into culture. Of course, industrialized bread exists here as well. It doesn't have some of the carcinogenic ingredients that are not allowed in the EU, but it still has all of the dough conditioners, bleaches, still artificially risen, all of that. The difference is that it is rare. It is much more rare here. What is much more common is the ability to go to your local bakery and get bread that only has a few ingredients. And it's the ingredients that humans have been using for tens of thousands of years to make this staple food. The feeling that I generally have is that this is how it should be. And then when I go elsewhere and you have other kinds of bread that, that last kind of bizarre amounts of time, you know, you're like, this is not really how it should be. You get calibrated right. to a kind of- And I think uh, just, there are some other videos I watched and it was just talking about like pretty much all foods, like all of your food shouldn't be lasting like three to four weeks type of thing like i think i've seen one with milk there was another one that she said her fruit she said her strawberries were good for like two or three weeks me personally like when i buy strawberries them things are i ain't gonna lie I, maybe i'm buying the real thing i don't know but my strawberries are done after like three or four days i don't even know if they should last that long but some people talking about their fruit last three or four weeks that's a long time new standard here mm -hmm. and it's it's it kind of ruins you. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out Paris is low key one of the most bikeable cities I've ever been in. But it used to not be like that. Like last time I was here, it was not this bikeable. Wow. I smell some urban design policy changes at, afoot here. Someone tried to change this in the US a few years ago. A company called Panera. Not Walked Panera Bread. And a visit to Panera Bread. Tried to bring like European bread culture to the United States. And they did. They had high quality, okay. delicious bread. I like Panera but bread. what happens next is p potentially the best metaphor for America. Hello, I like money. They got a business <laughs> loan so they could expand. And then they got investors and they started to expand and scale. And then they were purchased in a massive merger. And now they're planning to go public on the public stock exchanges. Like they just became a massive corporation. Dang who does not focus on making quality artisan. See, we got a Panera Bread, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, I have ate a sandwich there before, but I never, I never, I, this is my first time seeing this video, so I never even thought about it. Now my mind's gonna be thinking about this video if I go to Panera Bread, cause I went for the first time the other, they have some good mac and cheese. I'll give them, I love their mac and cheese. I know this is about bread, but the mac and cheese is pretty good. They just became a massive corporation who does not focus on making quality artisan bread. Instead, they're now just a machine pumping out bread that kind of looks and feels like European bread, but is now done in a uniform, mass-produced, yeah. industrialized process. Mr. Crab said it best, money. All in the name of scale and profit. <sighs> wow, they have it, canned. <laughs> so the question is, why does this matter? Like, am I just being a snob who's like, traditional bread is better and therefore everyone should have it and I hate America. That was snobby. You're a snob. No, I'm not. Kind of, yeah. But also, it actually makes a difference in how it goes into your body. Mm -hmm. The beauty of bread always was that you could put this goop out in the air and bacteria would come down and start to feast on it and kind of start the digestion process. That is what natural fermentation does, is it starts to break down right. the wheat make it ready to go into your body. The way that we make bread in America doesn't really leave time for this. We use Dang. heat and chemicals to speed this process up, to make it rise faster. I it, just wanna know, when did cooking become a science project? That's crazy. Rise bigger in an artificial, synthetic way. And so you're actually getting a much inferior product to what original bread making looks like and what it produces. Yes, it lasts longer. Yes, it tastes like chewy, pillowy, sugary heaven, <laughs> but it's not bread the way that humans have been eating it for tens of thousands of years. Right. Convenience, scale, independence, 
That is what we love in America. We love shelf life. We love industrialized efficiency. And to me, yeah, all that stuff is super great because it means we get to live these wonderful, prosperous, convenient lives. But I think we lose something really big when we focus on those as the priorities yeah, as opposed to quality and community and culture. Wonder Last thing I'll say here is that this is slowly changing. You have a movement in the US of people wow. making some of the best bread in the world using the most traditional methods and ingredients. That's a good thing. In these big cities, you have amazing bakeries doing bread that is on par with anything you could get in Europe. And that kind of blows my mind. The problem is, and my critique, is that that is still so rare and specialty yeah. and really only available to people who live in big urban areas. And meanwhile, the rest of us, the most accessible bread to us is this industrial, mass-produced garbage. Dang. Belongs in the trash! And that is enough to make me pretty frustrated. Dang. I ain't gonna lie, I'm not a Wonder Bread fan myself. You know, I would have tossed it too, but... Man, that's crazy. That definitely gave me a different look, because... That video I seen that kind of talked about bread, it was just talking about all the sugars in there. My guy went a little deeper into history and stuff, like... Man, he made me think, like, bread ain't the same. It ain't the same. Like, that's crazy. That is crazy. Now I have different varieties of breads, you know. Don't get me wrong, and Man, that makes sense why, like, every time I eat some type of bread, I get the hiccups bad. Very, very bad. I get the hiccups, man. But this was good. This was good. Y'all let me know your thoughts. Uh, how's the bread in Europe? You know, uh, now I got to try some bread from Europe. I gotta try it, you know what I'm saying? But that's all I have for this video. Y'all hit that subscribe button. Send down those recommendations. Y'all be blessed, be the best, and be you. I'm out.